Hello cunts. Welcome to volume one of my, or episode one of my music reviews. Um, first off, don't expect fancy shit. This is budget music review. There's going to be no fancy graphics, none of that bullshit. It's just very basic, me telling you what I think of what I'm listening to. Um, no money's changing hands, no cunts paying me for these reviews, so they will be honest. If it's shit house, it's shit house. If it's good, it's good. I'll tell you pretty much what I think. Uh, if you don't like it, tough titty, I guess. Um, so, on with the first review. First review is uh, for a band called Four Act. Uh, don't don't know anything about these guys apart from the fact that the singer uh, used to be in Crust Fun Kids. Uh, it's on Jay Blurter's Inner City Uprising label. It's a self-titled album, um, and it was it interested me because it was described as blackened hardcore. What the fuck is blackened hardcore? Well, now I know um, it is hardcore with a bit of black metal in it. Fairly obvious, right? Should have known. Um, actually sounds really good. I'm not a black metal fan. Black metal kind of bores me, but this didn't. Uh, I was surprised. I kind of expected it to be gimmicky and shit, but um, yeah, very quickly got into it. Weirdly, the first two tracks are identical. It's obviously a glitch when they uploaded it to Bandcamp, and hopefully they fix that. Um, but yeah, very good album. Uh, very strong. Vocals are good. Very spooky. Um, black metal-y, growly vocals. Um, the riffs were great. And every time that started getting too black metal for me and a bit boring, bang with a fast part or bang with a nasty fucking brutal hardcore breakdown. Uh, I really like this. I wasn't expecting to. Um, yeah. Artwork's pretty cliche, scary, skulls and shit. Don't let that put you off. It's definitely worth listening to if you like proper hardcore, if you like black metal, if you like angry stuff. Yeah, give it a go. I'd give it four bog rolls out of five. Uh, I liked it enough that I'm going to buy it, um, which I'm not doing for a lot of these because some of them I just don't like that much. But this one, definitely a nice surprise. Thought it would be shit. It wasn't. Four act self-titled album. Give it a go. So number two. Number two. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. Um, number two, Dick Lord's album. It's so boring. I actually have it in hard copy. I liked it enough to buy a hard copy of it, which should tell you straight away it was good. Um, seen these guys live, or these girls live, a bunch of times. They're fantastic fucking live, so don't be a shit cunt. Go and see them when they're playing near you, which obviously isn't going to be for a while, assuming that we're not all dead, right? Um, anyway, back to the EP. It's really good. Um... Some of the songs I'd already heard, some I hadn't. Really catchy, good riffs, good vocals. Sounds great production-wise. Um, can't say enough about this. It's catchy. Songs like Mole on the Doll, stuck in my head all the time. Um, Deborah, See You Next Tuesday. The whole thing, there's not a shit track on there. Um, yeah, I give this four and a half um, dead people out of five. <laughs> uh, really can't say enough good things about this band. Big fan. Um, and it, again, if you see them live, like the record's good, but live they are shit hot. Um, the front woman, she's just, you can't take your eyes off her. She's, and I don't mean that in a pervy, you know, way. I mean, she's fucking good, and she's all over the place, really grabs your attention. The rest of the band are very solid live, too. Um, I would definitely recommend you go and see these cunts. Um, yeah, four and a half out of five, and they're very rare I'm going to give an album four and a half out of five, but I really fucking like this. So, um, do yourself a favour, as Molly Meldrum would say. Go and get it. It's fucking good. Dick Lord. It's so boring. Which, it isn't. Alright. Third one. Admiral Akbar's Dishonourable Discharge. It's a fantastic name, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, it's two songs, Sick and Brunswick Breakout. <sighs> it's ska music. It's... Ska music. Ska music is fucking ridiculous and worse th worse than anything else. This is that stupid, fast ska that came started coming out in the 90s and just sucks your will to live. So I thought I'd give it a go anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting artwork. It's a, some guy coming straight out the back of a rhino's butthole. He's obviously not heard this because if he'd heard it, he'd be sticking his head back in there. 
Uh, first song, just shit. Sorry, guys. I'm sure if you were a Scar fan, you'd probably be pulling your dick over it, but it's just it's just awful circus carnival clown fucking fuck off music. Hated it, hated it, hated it. You know, it's not like they're untalented. They can obviously play their instruments, so, you know, calm down, guys. Don't fucking throw pitchforks at me or shit. Uh, but it's just Scar music, and Scar music is toilet. I'm sorry. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd got through one song. I was like, fuck me, do I have to listen to the second one? I thought, well, I should... You know, by rights, I'm doing it properly. I need to listen to the whole fucking thing. And, lo and behold, pleasant surprise for a little bit. Second song called Brunswick Breakout is actually a Sham 69 song. Should be Borstal Breakout, but it's called Brunswick Breakout. Um, they didn't kill it. They didn't murder it. They didn't ruin the song. So I've got to give them credit for that. Um, I'll never listen to this again. I'd rather stick a tube full of bull amps down the eye of my penis than listen to this again. Yeah, I'm going to give them two turds out of five. And the two is for, A, the name Admiral Akbar's Dishonorable Discharge is a good name. And B, they did a Sham 69 cover, and I like Sham 69, so I'll give them that, and they didn't ruin it. So two out of five, and I'm being fucking generous here. If you like Scar, you'll probably like it, but if you like Scar, you're probably a fuckwit. Number four, Mucho Sona or Macho Sona, I don't know how you say it, Mucho Macho, who cares, all right? Um, what I can tell you is the album's called Murdocracy, or EP's called Murdocracy, it's good, and Murdocracy is in Rupert Murdoch, ha ha ha, very clever. Um, yeah, this is good, uh, I am a fan of these guys already, I do have their previous album, I get on quite well with a couple of the guys, um, so I'm a little bit biased. Um, but this is a good example of what you can do with a, a, a band with brass that doesn't suck balls. Um, you know, they've got trombone, trumpet, all that brass shit. Sounds good. Good riffs, uh, great guitar playing, the vocals are great. Uh, and the, the thing I like about this is the brass doesn't overpower the songs, it actually adds to them. It's not tacked on. Um, remind, and I'm sure they probably get this all the time, but it does remind me a little bit of Rocket from the Crypt. Um, but yeah, well worth a listen. There's some great riffs in there. Lyrics are good. A um, bit political, obviously, given the name of the EP. And they do a fantastic Saints cover, Know Your Product, which is just ball-tearingly good. It's a bit faster than the original. Uh, really, that's, that came out a while back, and that's been um, on my high rotation list. I listen to that song a lot. The rest of the album is still worth listening to as well. I'll give it a solid uh, four face masks out of five. Uh, worth getting, again, another good live band. Um, you know, and an extra point maybe for Moe's hair because that cunt's got the fucking best hair ever. Um, and, you know, all the cheesy rock moves. They're a really good band to see live. This is a really good EP. If you like riffs, if you like rock and roll, you should like this. Uh, again, four, four out of five. Worth picking up. And, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. You should too. Next up, The Dirty Sluts, with a Z, because it's cool to spell things wrong, Trapped in a Glass Container. Um, it's a difficult one. It was sent to me and I thought someone was taking the piss because it's well known that I'm not a fan of this band live. I've seen them a lot of times. I just don't get into them. Sorry, ladies. They're all really nice people. Um, but not my thing live. But I thought I'll give it a go. Uh, artwork's interesting. Got some weird kind of monster looking thing in a martini glass. And these guys have been around a long time. Uh, apparently this is their first proper release. And I thought I was going to hate it. I did. I was expecting to hate it. And to be honest, there are parts I really didn't like. But there were, much to my surprise, parts which I quite enjoyed. Um, it's fucking long. It's 40 odd minutes long, and you're not Pink Floyd, stop. You don't need to be a 40 minute long release. Really, um, yeah, if you cull this down, there's actually enough good songs to get a good 15 minute, 20 minute release out of this. 40 minutes just, yeah, suck my will live a little bit towards the end. But that being said, and there's some fairly nasty things being said for me, there was some good stuff on this as well. Um, they do swap vocals around like they do live. All three members swap, pick up different instruments and whatnot. Um, I think that helps 
when it's 40 minutes long to kind of cut out the monotony. Uh, it's hard when it's just drums, bass and vocals though. Some of these songs, they started off quite good and you're waiting for that guitar to kick in. There's like a good start riff and you're like, yeah, this is going somewhere. Where's the guitar? Bang. But of course there's none because there's no guitar on the whole fucking album. Um, one or two songs really actually were good. Napthaline, for whatever reason, really grabbed me. Uh, another song called Super Greg, which if you're an old cunt like me, you might remember the internet nerd uh, Super Greg kind of viral thing going way back in the day. Um, so that was funny that a song about Super Greg and Your Girlfriend Eats Shit, which is another quite funny one. Um, so there were some good songs on here, I'm not going to lie. I wanted to hate this. I can't hate it. There's enough good stuff on there. Um, you know, I can't say it was completely shit. Um, would I buy it? No. Would I listen to it again? Actually, there's a couple of songs I might just listen to again, um, which was a surprise to me because I, I expected to hate this, and I don't hate it. I don't like it either, um, but I don't fucking hate it. I'd give this... Well, it's hard. I'd give this, in its current format, at 40 minutes long, I'd give it two and a half. If they'd culled it down, pulled out the good tracks and dump the shit, sorry girls, um, I'd probably give it a three and a half because there are a couple of really good songs in there but 40 minutes is too long for just drums, bass and guitar um, unless you're doing something really special with the bass or really special with the drums which no offence they're not, um, not that they can't play or anything but yeah there's not enough going on to warrant 40 minutes of this for me. If you're a fan of the Dirty Sluts um, you'll probably think this is the best thing since sliced bread, uh, but yeah. Nice people. Two and a half. But, you know, there was some positives out of it. There were some good songs on there, um, but a lot of it was just either boring um, or just angry woman shouting over dull bass riffs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're all nice people but yeah um not for me but again if you're a dirty sluts fan and they do have quite a lot of fans people seem to like them live i don't know why because they're not my thing but you know there is some positives there just not for me next up is idle threat with rope burn uh full length album sent to me by a guy called Jason Zoidberg. I hope that's not your last fucking name. If it is, smack your parents upside the head because seriously, Zoidberg, it's a horrible last name. Anyway, um, yes, quite surprised by this one. Um, let's put it on and it's kind of, you, the first thing I thought was shit. Sounds like a lot of hardcore from the uh, early 2000s. Um, kind of polished. Recording quality is really good on it. Um, but what came to mind really quickly was that pretty standard hardcore sound, but it got better as it went on. Um, some big introductions for some of the songs, which I appreciate. Drumming was fantastic. Vocals were all right. Um, occasionally it would kind of veer into other things where it wasn't so much hardcore as there was a bit of screamo in there and I'm not a big screamo fan, so that didn't really grab me. And even a bit of metalcore in some, which again, I'm not a huge metalcore, but for what it is, it's quite good. Drumming really grabbed me every time. Uh, some really fast drumming. Um, if you like 2000s hardcore, before it got into stupid, dumb fuck, chest beating, I'm so tough kind of bullshit, you might really like this. Um, it wasn't bad. I'd probably listen to it again. Uh, the artwork's pretty fantastic on it. Someone's gone to a, a fair bit of trouble to do some pretty nice art. Uh, I'd give it a three and a half. It's not a bad album. It's not really the kind of stuff that I listen to. But um, nice for a change up. I'll probably end up buying it and stick it on the, the car, in the car when I'm out driving around the place. It's not bad. Not a world beater, but uh, if you like, you know, two thousands hardcore, you might like it. And I have seen them once live, and they were really good live. Um, so you know, make of that what you will. Very good live band. Not sure entirely that it translates across to this. How good they are live. Um, but yeah, not a terrible album by any stretch of the imagination. I didn't mind it. Three and a half diseases out of five. Um, yeah, not bad. 
And lastly, um, I have no idea who these people are. They sent me this link pretty much at random because I said to uh, some people, hey, shoot me some reviews. These guys did. Um, Persecutor with Demonstration 2020. It's an EP. Um, it was described kind of as a bit of power violence and fast core. Didn't know what to expect. I ended up buying this. I really liked it. Um, reminded me a lot of early napalm death like first album scum side one uh or doom a lot of the early doom stuff especially the vocals really sounded like old mate from doom i really like this it's fast grindy power violency hardcore yeah I, they're from melbourne um don't know a lot about them but would look look forward to hearing more from them i really dug this i like one of the things i liked about this is the vocals were nice and clear even though they were growled vocals uh, you could understand what the cunt was saying, and a lot of these power violence and grindcore releases, it just sounds like a bunch of fucking dogs have been kicked in the nuts growling. This guy, you know what he's saying, even though he's growling it. The vocals are nice and clear, the riffs are good, the drumming's good. Um, yeah, really like this. Four dead people out, I've already used dead people, so fuck that off. Um, I don't know, four shitty internet music reviewers out of five. I really rate this, um, Persecuted Demonstration 2020, if you like grindcore, if you like fastcore, if you like hardcore, if you like power violence, yeah, give this a listen, it's good, uh, not boring, fast riffs, good drumming, great vocals, um, I would, I, I don't know what they're like live, but I'd like to see them, so if you're listening Persecutor cunts, you should come up to Sydney or Wollongong so I can go and see you. Um, because I'm not going to Melbourne because it's full of hipster cunts and that's where the Smith Street Band is from and fuck the Smith Street Band. Anyway, that's been my reviews volume one. Um, if any cunt likes it, there might be a volume two. If so, send me your stuff. I'll review it. I'll be honest. Um, yeah, and if you get butt hurt by anything I said, please don't punch me in the head when you see me because I don't want to have to fight you. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're offended, yeah, well, um, don't make shit music, I guess. Um, anyway, that's it. Fuck off.